Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am bringing you my top 25 farmhouse DIY signs. So let's get to it. I got this cork board here uh, locally at one of the thrift store and I instantly grabbed it. It was $3.99, but it was half off. So I got it for it about, about $2. And um, I quickly knew what I wanted to create with it. I am going to create like a command center kind of. And so I'm going to remove this little board that it has on the bottom. It's just just hooked up with several screws. So I'm going to remove those screws from the bottom. And that way I'll just have the cork board. I want the corkboard to also be a little bit of a sign. So I'm going to add these. It's so good to be home stencil on the bottom left of the corkboard. That way, I don't know, I guess it just farmhouses it a little bit. And also it just adds just a nice little touch there. piece of plywood I got at the hardware store in the scrap wood area and it was already this size I did not have to cut it or anything I grabbed it it was only a few um, not even a few dollars it's very inexpensive and it was in my garage so I dusted it off and now I'm going to give it two coats of regular household paint this is a Valspar white paint and um, that's it I'm just going to give it the two coats Once the paint was dry on the other side, I flipped it over and now I'm going to add a couple of hooks. I want to add these hooks to the back before I add anything to the front. That way it's nice and easy to be able to add the hooks. I'm a ghost in these walls Or at least I try to be Cause I hope that I'm not showing How I feel for her now it's time to put everything together. So the cork board is going to go on the upper left hand corner of the um, big board, I guess the white board. And I'm going to secure it using one inch wood screws on each corner. I am now going to add three farmhouse style hooks to the bottom of the whiteboard. This will be to hang either decor hats scarves jackets whatever it may be but i think adding these three to the bottom would be such a cute touch and as you can tell <laughs> this crew is not wanting to go in i finally got it to go in but boy was it giving me a hard time Like she stole my heart Without knowing she did But I guess that it will pass Yeah, I can't be the only one Who 
got lost inside the blue of those eyes. I've got a letter. And then I decided to add a couple of clips to the right side of the board. And um, I'm just going to attach it using some screws. And then we'll be done with this one, guys. Seriously, this was very simple, very easy. But what a great way to reuse this cork board. And both the clips and the hooks I got on Amazon. And they're on my Amazon store, which is linked down below. A lot of the products that I use are linked down below in my Amazon store. Uh, let's see, Dollar Tree picture frame that I used for one of my 4th of July DIYs. After 4th of July, I took everything down and I decided to keep this frame because it was in great shape and I had already spray painted it white. So I said, why not? Let's use it. And then I got these paint stirring sticks from Amazon. They come a whole bunch in a box and they're very inexpensive. I'll have them link. I'll have my Amazon store linked down below and I have them in my Amazon store if you're interested. So basically I'm just going to place them on the back of the frame using hot glue and I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch in between each. Now I, I'm alternating the little curved part from each stick, one going up, one going down. That way they're not all facing the same way, leaving a kind of like a, I don't know, like a weird mark. But that way is um, spread out through the, through each side of the frame. You can certainly leave the stirring sticks in that natural wood color, which I think it's beautiful. Um, or you can stain them because these are wood and they will stain. Um, but if you're going to stain them, just make sure that you place the ruler part of the stick facing um, to the back. Um, so see like right there you can see that the inches and the measurement parts. Um, so put that towards the back. But in this case, I didn't mind that they were facing that way because I am going to paint them using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white and I'm going to do a heavy dry brush technique. Basically dry brushing is you just have a very little amount of paint on your brush while you are brushing it but in this case I am adding just a heavier amount but I'm still going to leave some of the wood showing through because I wanted to have a distressed look. I am using a chippy brush. These are my preferred brushes to do DIYs with. Um, the only thing I don't do with them is paint furniture. Anything else, I really love using them. They're very inexpensive and they last a while. So as you can tell, there's that rusty or rusty, rustic farmhouse distress look that I was looking for. Once it was dry, it was time to add some greenery to the bottom left um, of the frame and this greenery I got from at home I can try to find a link but I know their florals are very um, seasonal so I'm not sure if I can find one but um, yeah it came in a little bunch and they were really good quality and I just thought one branch would be just perfect for this frame and I thought about using hot glue to secure it, but I decided to use just jute twine. I like to avoid using hot glue on my furrows because I feel like it allows them to last longer. Basically, I just did like an X in the front of the greenery. That way it's nice and secure and I just made a very tight knot in the back. And then I went on to add a clip for a photo. Now you can add one of those like black clips that you can find on Amazon, Walmart, anywhere. Uh, but in this case, I wanted to add this clothespin. I just thought it would look cute. The wood tone matches the little wood tones coming through the paint sticks. And some hot glue did the work. And I just found I'd out kind of like the middle of that top right side and I left enough space to put on a about a five by seven picture. 
and then I thought something was missing so I added a bow using jute rope this jute rope I got on Amazon it is also in my Amazon store and again the link to my Amazon store is down below and I just uh, placed it with hot glue on the stem of the greenery. I'm not one to use many bows on my decorations, but every once in a while, I feel like it will look really cute. And in this case, I agree. It just, it looked super cute and I think it finished it off. And then that's it. I placed a photo of me and my husband on our wedding day. And I just thought it looked so cute, so romantic and so farmhouse. Oh God, here she comes The woman that I love It's too bad she'll never know Yeah, I can't tell her how I feel Because she has someone who makes her happy I'm a ghost all right, so for my next DIY, I'm going to take this leftover foam board from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to just cut a random piece off of it. I'm not looking for a specific size. It's just, just something I had left over and I just made a cut and then just kind of straightened the edges out. In some cases, you can certainly sand down the edges of foam board and it actually smooths it out really well. But in this case, I didn't have to because I will be adding a small little frame and you'll see that here. So once I had the size and the edges that I wanted, I wanted to um, add just one coat of the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. And it's, uh, it seems pointless because it's white, but when you look at it in real life, in person, you can see the paint versus the paper from the, uh, from the foam board. So I just wanted to add at least one coat to just give it that paint effect and I don't want it to look like foam board I want it to look like a wood sign so once that was dry I am now taking these large popsicle sticks or tongue su depressor suppressors I don't know what they're called um, and I'm just going to cut and as I go I'm going to start hot gluing on the edges and it'll just create a little frame for it so I am cutting as I go because uh, sometimes I needed some longer than others. So I didn't um, pre-cut everything. I just cut as I went. And these clippers, I think they're called, I also have it on my Amazon store down below. And they hot glue so well to foam board. I mean, really everything hot glues well to foam board. But um, I didn't need anything else. So I went all around, as you can see. And now I'm going to take these decals from the Dollar Tree, which I am so obsessed with them. I own a Cricut machine, and I can cut whatever I want. But I know a lot of you do not have them. So I try my best to give you options on what you can do. So these decals are a great alternative you can cut them. I cut these all the time and I use them as I want. Like in this case, I had already used a portion of the decal. Now I'm going to use another portion and I still have a little portion left. So I really like them. They stick well. They last and they're only a dollar. So even if you change your decor like I do all the time and you need to either get rid of a gift them or even sometimes, unfortunately, throw them away, um, you're not spending a lot of money and that's the beauty of it. So once I had the decal where I wanted it, I am now going to add some succulents. These are from Dollar Tree. I know. They're beautiful. And the texture, some of these have like a very soft texture. Loving them. I mean, they're just so beautiful. So I'm just going to hot glue them to the upper left-hand corner of the frame. And again, I'm just eyeing out where I want to put them. And um, that'll be it for this one. I'm just going to hot glue them as I see fit and as I like to see them. And then in the back, I didn't show it, but I just added a little jute twine, uh, a loop of a jute twine with hot glue. And that was where, where, what I used to hang the frame from. And that is it. She comes Woman that I love It's too bad she'll never know Yeah, I can't tell her how I feel Because she
she has someone who makes her happy I'm a ghost in these walls Or at least I try to be Cause I hope that I'm not showing all right, guys, so on to DIY number three. This sign I made in one of my winter uh, DIY videos, and I just thought, hey, I'm going to change it because I need something in my kitchen above my sink, and I think it'd be super cute to have a little wood sign. So I did not need this anymore. I did not want it anymore, and that is the beauty of making your own signs is that if you don't have the finances to go out and buy more wood or buy a new sign, but you have some paint, <laughs> hey, get it going, right? Just paint over it, do what you need to do, and have fun. I cut this uh, sign or these words using my Cricut, as I mentioned earlier. Um, it's just one that I already had that I purchased off of Cricut Design Space. And I'm using transfer tape to just place it on top and that is it i mean this is like the simplest thing ever and yes the frame was already built because i built it with wood when i made this sign for my winter decorations but um if you have anything else in your home that you already have again you can just paint over it and make it as you want so this one super cute very farmhouse and i love it Look out, here she comes Woman that I love It's too bad she'll never know Yeah, I can't tell her how I feel Because she has someone who makes her happy I'm a ghost in these walls Or at least I try to be I'm here in my garage looking for a piece of scrap wood or paneling to be more exact because I want to make this one a little larger. This is going to be a farmhouse sign that I'm going to use in my kitchen, but it's going to be in between my kitchen and my master bedroom. Um, so I'm looking for something a, a little in the larger side and even if I have to cut it, but I actually ended up finding this one, which was perfect size for what I needed. I get my pieces of scrap wood from the hardware store in their scrap area. Very, very inexpensive. So you guys should check that out if you can safely go to the hardware store. All right, so I dusted it off, cleaned it off, and then I am going to add two coats of white chalk paint. This is, again, the Rust-Oleum in the linen white and my chippy brush. And uh, yeah, the first coat always looks very sloppy, <laughs> but that's just how it is. And I actually thought I was going to need a third coat, which sometimes you do when you have very dark um, base surface, but I only needed two. It worked with two. I was very happy. So then I grabbed my permanent Sharpie or permanent marker. In this case, it's Sharpie, but you can use any one you want and a bowl from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to trace a circle. Just trace the bowl. And then once I have that trace, I am going to use the same bowl and trace another circle just off side of it. So a little bit off side of it. And I was having issues with this permanent marker. It was just not pigmented enough. So I tried switching it and it wasn't working out. So I ended up just having to use it. And then I did it once again. I used the bowl and I did a third circle just uh, also off off center or offset from the original one making sure they're all in different areas but they're all the same size so that's exactly what I was looking for and then again I am using a decal from the Dollar Tree that I have already used from for another project as you can tell is all cut up but I am going to use the open your heart portion of it and cut it cut it up to fit the circle and i'm just going to place it very lightly before i press on and kind of really make it stick because that way i can always move it around and even if you stick it and then you have to move it around it actually works really well
So you see I'm just placing it very lightly so that I can move them as needed. And the font is beautiful on this decal. I hope I can find it again. All right, so then once I had that done, it was time to add some greenery, of course, because I love my greenery. <laughs> this is boxwood. And to be honest with you, I don't even remember where I got this because I got it so long ago. I want to say it was Walmart, but it was a long time ago. I have used it over and over and over again in my decorations, and it just keeps on going. Um, I'm going to uh, make kind of like a swag for the side, bottom side of the circle. And I'm going to um, wrap it around with some rope from the Dollar Tree and to secure it with hot glue. Um, I just think it's, I saw, this is actually a Pinterest inspired sign that I saw and I just thought it was super cute and it would look amazing on my, in my kitchen in this wall that I have. And, um, so anyways, yeah, I'm just making sure that it's shaped to fit that side of the circle and then with the hot glue secure it and, um, that'll be done with that swag. And then the last thing I had to do with the sign was add something to hang it from. Um, you can add different things to sign. You can add a claw tooth hook on the back. You can hot glue rope on the back like I did with my second sign. But in this case, I wanted to drill a couple holes on the top. This is one of the thicker drill bits because the rope that I'm going to be placing is going to be on the thicker side. I'm eyeing out the holes. I know I should be measuring, but I like to eye things out. <laughs> um, so yeah, just drilling it. And then I'm going to thread the rope from the back to the front so that I can tie knots in the front. And um, that way you can see the knot. And I don't want this rope to be like super long. I don't want it to hang long. I just want it to hang just enough. So I threaded it again and then knotted. And this rope is also from Amazon. The rope that I use on the swag is from Dollar Tree. I had that leftover, but this rope is from Amazon, and I do have it on my Amazon store as well if you want to take a look at that. I'm using some painter's tape on that one because it didn't, it wasn't threading well through the hole. Uh, but once that was that, I'm done. I mean, this is done. I'll put it up, and this is probably my absolute favorite of all. I'm so in love with this one. from a pallet that um, obviously I got out of a pallet and it was already out uh, and I just had it in my scrap wood area. I'm going to give it a light sand to remove any of the splinters, but I don't want to remove any of the nice, beautiful, natural, weathered look that it has. So I'm literally doing it very light. There's still a few little splinters, but we're creating a picture frame, which is going to be on the wall. Not a lot of handling, so I'm fine with that. I'm just taking some measurements to take the plank out to my miter saw and cut it in three equal size pieces. All right, so here they are. Look how beautiful. I love the the old looking um, holes where the nails were. It's just beautiful. So I'm going to flip them over because I want the opposite side to be where the picture grows. And I'm just going to attach them together and I'm going to use some painters sticks that this one is a leftover piece that it fit perfectly i just need to cut the other one to the same size and i'm using my miter box because it's just a smaller piece of wood and if you guys don't have one of these and you're often creating smaller projects this is something i truly suggest you have i do have it in my amazon store which is linked down below so now that I have both pieces cut, I'm just going to attach them using wood glue and brad nails so it's nice and secure.
All right, so now I'm going to take these photo covers from the Dollar Tree. There's two in each pack. I just need one of them. And they have them in black and white. So for this one, I wanna choose the white one. And basically what I'm gonna do, this is a five by seven size. So I took my wedding photo and I am just, it literally fits like almost too perfect. Like I wish it would have overlapped a bit more, but I did get it to work out pretty well. And I just taped it with clear tape on the back. Just two little pieces was fine. Now I'm gonna take one of these little black clips that I got on Amazon. Again, I do have them in my Amazon store linked down below. And I'm just gonna screw it in right in the center. And then that's where I will have the picture. And that's it guys. I did put a claw hook on the back of it to be able to hang it. But look how beautiful that looks. And it was so simple and literally cost me cents to make because of the picture cover. piece of scrap wood that I had left over from another project. It's a one by eight, I believe. And then now this is a piece of a, what was it? It was like a dresser. No, it's like a little side table. And I didn't need this part of it. So I literally, oh, I know what it was. It wasn't a side table. It was an old sewing machine. And I removed this part because I didn't need it. I turned it into like a little center uh, or coffee table, storage table. So I kept it because I just thought it was super cute. I cleaned it off and I'm now sanding this piece off so it's nice and smooth. All right guys, so this piece here is very, very reddish tone. And I wanted to keep as much of the staining through on the white paint as possible. So what I am doing here is I am priming with a stain blocking primer. This is Kills, and I use this a lot in my furniture. And I'm just gonna do both of them, one coat of this primer. I don't really need to do the the, uh, the larger piece, but because I already have it out, I figured I'd just give it one coat of the primer. But as you can tell, look at the smaller piece. It's already turning pinkish and this is what happens when you have these very old pieces that are very red tone and I was afraid that would happen and it did give me quite a bit of a headache so after I was done with the one coat what I had to do was then start adding a coat of shellac now shellac is like a top coat I don't use it often only for the purposes of this like sealing any stains and I'm just gonna do one coat to see if it would work and let it dry. After the shellac was fully dry, I'm now adding, I'm gonna add a total of two coats of uh, Rust-Oleum chalk bin in the linen white. I'm sorry, it wasn't two coats, it was just one coat of the chalk paint and I did that on both pieces. Alright guys, so here we are. We still have some pink showing. I'm so frustrated. Um, I am going to now try to spray paint it and see if that'll help. Um, I don't know. We'll see. If not, we'll keep trying.
while the other piece dries outside i am now going to stencil the bigger piece using the artisa permanent acrylic marker which i am obsessed with <laughs> i recently used this on a sponsored video by artisa and it's just so smooth it's almost very therapeutic i don't know i just really like the way it just glides and so instead of stenciling it with regular like stenciling brush I thought I'd use this marker because I really loved it. This stencil, I don't know, <laughs> remember where I got it. But if I do remember and I find it, I'll have it linked down below. But if you go on Amazon, you can just Google, or not Google, if you go on Amazon and search farmhouse stencil, I'm sure something will come up. All right, so after, uh, basically, I'm just going to stencil it, all of it, and then, um, of course, let it dry. But it dries very quickly. I'm now going to take my chippy brush here and I'm just going to add a little bit of distress using the Rust-Oleum Country Gray chalk paint. And basically I'm just going to focus on the edges and then very, very little on the middle section just to add again more of that farmhouse distress look. Thinking about my options, every detail in my head. So the spray paint actually worked. Um, and I was hoping, I think even if I added one more coat of the chalk paint, I think it would have worked, but I just wanted to dry something different and it did work. So I was very happy with that. And I'm, I now added some more of that distress using the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the country gray. So now what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to attach both pieces together and I tried marking where the holes were with the pencil or I thought about it but you just could not get the pencil in there because it's such a small tight space so I grabbed this wire that I got on at Dollar Tree and I'm basically just wiggling in there to see if it'll scratch off a little bit of the paint to mark where the holes were and it, and it was it was successful it was it was there and I was able to drill a couple holes so then I can put screws in. Now the screws that I needed to put, it's one of those like machinery, machinery screws where you would have to put a bolt in the back. I couldn't add regular screws once again because it was such a tight space inside that little cubby that I could not get my drill in there. So here I am trying to get or snip these screws because I was trying to having a hard time I either had too small or too big of screws so I was able to clip them and it worked really well and then I had a good size for what I needed and then I secure them in the back using uh, bolts and then we'll be done with this one guys it's gonna be a tabletop kind of farmhouse decor and look how beautiful and this was literally scrap piece of wood and a scrap piece of a little sewing machine that I did not need and look how beautiful it turned out. But it doesn't really matter, nothing matters, so I cry instead. This was truly a side table that I redid recently, uh, fairly recent, I guess. And um, although it looks very reddish tone like that other piece, it's not as, as dark. I don't know why they both are coming out you know, or this one is also having that reddish tone. It really wasn't. So it didn't have any bleed through. But to play it safe, I did spray paint it <laughs> instead of hand painting it I just thought hey let me just try to just spray paint it plus it's also easier to get in all those little cubbies so I am using Rust-Oleum flat white spray paint and this is the same one I used on the other one I forgot to mention so I'm basically going to give it one coat but it's going to be a pretty heavy coat and then let it dry it 
All right, so once it dried, I brought it back inside and now I'm using a 120 grit sandpaper to give it a kind of medium distress, but only on the edges of the top portion, not in the middle, not on the sides, just on the top. And then once I was done, I did use my Cricut to cut a very simple stencil, or not stencil, decal, that said, or spelled love, and I am going to place it in the upper left hand cubby. That way, that one cubby will have the decal. Before I moved on with any other decor inside the little cubbies, I wanted to add a couple screws on each side so that I can then add some jute twine and that's where I will hang the decor from. All right, so now I'm going to take this tiny little clothes pin and I am going to um, hot glue it to the middle top of the left top <laughs> um, cubby as well as the, um, no, the right top cubby as well as the left bottom cubby. Um, and I'll do the same. That's so that we can use it to place smaller photos like those wallet size photos it would be perfect. And that's what I did. And then on the last cubby, just to add some color and greenery, I am going to hot glue this little tiny greenery that came off of a bigger pick that I have had for a while. And then I'm going to add a simple jute twine bow to the bottom of it just to kind of add a little detail there and then we'll be done and I added a couple photos of my kiddos and these were the only small photos that I was able to find you're gonna see it here in a minute and they're actually photos that we use for their passports so <laughs> that's all I can find but hey it worked it fit so I wanted to just put them there but it really turned out super cute This piece of scrap wood came off of a tabletop, again from one of the side tables that I flipped up a few months ago. This was almost a year ago that I flipped it and I just didn't know what to use it for and then I thought this would be perfect project for it. It, it was actually bigger and half of it or about a third of it actually was split and broken that's why I didn't use it on the side table I had to replace the top of the side table so I had this larger piece and I thought I'm I cleaned it off well and now I'm giving it two coats of the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white and what I want to create with this is a which we ha you have probably seen other DIYers do recently and that is a little place where we can hang our masks and I thought it would be cute to create my own and have it personalized so that we each know where our mask would go. Now this decal came from the Dollar Tree. I love these decals. Every time I go to Dollar Tree I always look 
through them to make sure that if they have any new ones. And this was a new one that I hadn't seen. It says, wash your hands and say your prayers because Jesus and germs are everywhere. And that was so cute. And I thought it was very appropriate for what I was making. So here I'm just going to dry fit the decal to kind of see where I want to place them and then start removing the sticky or the back part so that I can reveal the sticky part and then start placing them as I see fit. Alright, so now it's time to just start measuring so that I can start adding the little hooks where the mask will hang from. I'm going to add four because I do have a family of four. And then I'm going to pre-drill some holes and then add some white hooks that I got at the hardware store. Very inexpensive. They come in a little packet and they have like, I want to say it's like maybe 25 or 30 of them. And they worked out really well. All right, so I do love adding greenery when it comes to like farmhouse decor that are like white and, and, and black words. I just think it adds just a cute, I just love that combination. So I am going to take these boxwood picks that I got, um, I believe it was at Walmart. It was a, lot, a while ago and I have used them several times. I'm going to join them together using some jute twine and hot glue and then i am going to hot glue it to the top of the sign to kind of make it more of a swag kind of um arrangement there on the top all right so now i am going to take these little chalkboard picks i guess that's what i would call them i think they were meant for more of a gardening for the summertime but i bought a several packets and they come four in each little packet of course for a dollar because it's from the dollar tree so i removed the pick from the back and i'm going to hot glue them right above each hook when that way we can chalk write our names and everybody knows where their mask will go and after this we'll be done guys and it truly turned out so cute Something's off The way you look and how you pose When you talk I think you said enough You said you love for me Something brand new You said this is something You would never do Here we are in your car Let me say who you are Who you really are yeah. Don't need you here to say you're sorry
All right, guys, so the next DIY, I'm going to take this piece of wood that I had in the garage and as well as these pieces of uh, scrap wood that I also had in the garage, and I'm going to create a farmhouse sign. And this is going to be uh, where it has like a frame around it, and then I'm going to create like a, oh my gosh, like an X with the pieces of scrap wood, and that way it has a nice kind of like almost like a window look. All right, so after I did a whole bunch of measuring, I cut everything to the size that we needed, and then I sanded everything down using my palm sander. That way it's nice and smooth, and it's not gonna have any splinters. Now it's time to start building things. I'm just putting everything where it goes. Um, I'm using my brad nailer to secure it in place, but you can certainly use hammer and a nail if you have it, or maybe even just wood glue and just letting it dry overnight so it's nice and secure. Now that I have the frame on it, I am going to cut the middle parts. And so I am going to just place it on top and then using a pencil, I'm just gonna mark where the um, side frame ends and starts. And that way I know which angle to cut using my miter saw. And I'll do the same for the one that's going across, but I'm gonna make an extra cut in the middle so that it fits flush on each side of that one. And now that everything is put together, I am just going to give the whole thing two coats of Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in the Linen White. You hold my hand, look me 
All right, so now that everything is dry, I'm going to use this leftover vine. It has pine cones attached to it, and I have used it in several projects throughout the years. And I'm just going to cut a piece to just kind of fit the middle of the of the frame there. And I'm going to create a oh my gosh, a wreath <laughs> for the middle of it. So I'm just kind of just uh, fold it and then just start manipulating it so that it's the size and the shape that I want it. And then I'm going to start adding some greenery. This is just leftover greenery. Not leftover. No, this is from a like a drapey kind of greenery that I got over the summer and I never used. So I cut a piece off of it and I'm just going to start gluing it around just to create a very light, light feel wreath, which is the look I'm going for for this one. I swear. All right, so now I'm going to add these white florals. They almost look like um, baby's breath, but I don't think they are. I actually thrifted them a while ago. This big bag was filled with them, and I've used them throughout the year. So I'm just going to place some here and there just to add a little bit of that white tone that looks so pretty. And then now I'm just going to add a screw to the middle top portion of the frame. That way I can hang the wreath from it, and we'll be all done. I am going to create a tag, an oversized tag kind of sign. So I found this piece of board is kind of, um, uh, it's a thin piece of board and uh, like paneling, I guess is what it is. Uh, so I'm just measured two inches in from each side. And now here I'm just trying to figure out where to mark so that I can make the cut the two angled cuts on the top to create that tag look. So now that I have both points marked, I'm, I just took it to my miter saw and made the cut. So now I want to make the little hole. So every tag has a hole where you would put, you know, string through or whatever. So I'm just gonna eye out there the middle I, I, I do this a lot. I eye things out. <laughs> and then I'm going to use this. I have no idea what this is called. It's some sort of like drill bit that makes a circle hole. And um, so as I was making the hole, I was like, oh my gosh. Like I really don't have to poke it all the way through. I'm, I can just leave it like this and I think it looks very authentic. So I just kind of had the middle tiny hole poke through and then the rest was just kind of like indented. 
So now I'm going to give it two coats of the Rust-Oleum uh, chalk paint and the linen white and then let it fully dry. Once it was dry, I distressed it using my electric sander and a 220 grit sandpaper. I focused really heavier on the sides and the corners, but um, I did sand a little bit in the middle. And you can certainly do this by hand. All right, so now I'm dusting it really, really well. I wanna make sure there's no dust whatsoever because I will be adding a decal that I created using my Cricut. And it's two decals, one says home, the other, the other one says bless our, so it'll say bless our home. So I'm starting with the home because I wanna start from the bottom up. That way I'm not placing, you know, too far where, or too far below where the home then looks kinda off centered on the bottom there. So I'm starting with the home and adding it. And all these supplies, Cricut supplies that I use are linked also in my Amazon store. Now I made a mistake cutting this Bless Our Home. The S didn't have enough room in this little scrap piece of vinyl. I thought about just recutting it and then I thought, nope, I'm just going to hand fill in that last little part using permanent marker. And it actually looked pretty well. This is not permanent vinyl. Um, so if I always change my mind or, you know, want to actually have a full S, I can just cut it again and replace it. That S was had giving me a hard time there. So here I am, as you can see, just trying to fill in the little pieces missing there. And there you go. All right, so now I wanna create some sort of uh, floral arrangement for the top of it. I'm using Dollar Tree florals that I have had now for a while. Um, at least for several several months this is when like spring stuff were coming out and i'm just gonna make like a swag for it i thought about making a small wreath but i just thought i think a little swag will make look really cute so i'm just gonna um, join this these florals using jute twine from the dollar tree so i'm just gonna wrap it around several times and tie it and that way it's nice and secure but i can also keep that Kind of like bent going down um, or downward bend with you with the flowers oh my gosh i can't speak <laughs> with the florals so that it kind of drapes down and i'm going to secure it using hot glue oh and before i hot glue it i am going to untie or untwine um or unwrap some rope from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to use one of the strands and thread it through the little hole and I'm doing this first so that I don't mess up the the florals when it's already on there um, I'm just gonna make a simple knot let it hang like that and now I will secure the florals with hot glue and then I decided it needed a little something something so I'm going to use the remainder um, strand that was left and I'm going to just freehand a little bow um, the best I can because it has that twist to it. But I thought that gave it a little bit of character. I actually really liked it. And then once I was done creating the little bow, I just secured it with hot glue and then we will be all done. And there's that one. Look how cute. I love the purple, the freshness of it. And I mean, look, you can't even see the S. <laughs> I didn't do that on purpose, actually. That just happened to fall on there. But um, I just, I love this one. I want to say this is my favorite, but gosh, I just really like all of them. All right, so for my next DIY, I am going to use a piece of paneling that I have had for a while. I used it for a hutch that I flipped a while back and I had this piece left over and it was already this size. I'm gonna take a piece of that vine again that I used earlier, cut another piece and just make it as round as I could to place it right in the center. And then I'm gonna take the uh, greenery grass from the Dollar Tree and start placing some on that um, 
Oh my gosh, on the vine. The greenery is going to be towards just one side of the vine. And I'm just going to have some facing one way, some facing the other way. And I'm going to add some lamb's ear as well and tie everything together using rope from the Dollar Tree. And now I'm going to use some burlap ribbon from burlapfabric.com and I'm just going to cut a piece so that I can hang it on the frame. And I'm going to use my electric stapler to staple down the ribbon to the frame. And guys, I also want to tell you about my blog. It's DIYBeautyOnPurpose.com. I post about every month. I haven't posted in the past few months because I'm trying to um, really structure the blog. But I'd love to connect with you there as well. So it's all linked down below. All right, and then I'm going to take this upholstery tack. And I am going to cut the little pointy part. And then I'm going to hot glue it to the center of where all those staples are at. I think I overdid it with those staples. My gosh. And that way it just looks like it's hanging from the tack. And after I drilled a couple of holes, I'm just going to thread some jute twine from the Dollar Tree. And that's what will be what I hang the, the sign from. And I just think it turned out super cute. Alright, so on to the next DIY. I'm going to take this, what looks to be a little small cutting board. I found it at the thrift store and I quickly grabbed it because it just screamed farmhouse. So I removed the little price tag there and then just gave it a, it was pretty clean, just gave it a little dust. And now I'm just going to paint it using Rust-Oleum chalk paint and then linen white and I gave it two coats.
after the paint was dry, I am going to sand the edges using a 220, no, no 220. This was a 120 grit sandpaper, and I'm just going to focus on the edges. And then using my Cricut, I cut a very farmhouse style decal. I thought it would be perfect for my kitchen where this little cutting board is going to go in. And I'm just in love with the way it turned out. To finish it off, I threaded jute rope, and that's it. We're all done with this one. This was an old piece of scrap wood that I had in the garage. It was a longer piece and I cut it in half. I absolutely love all the texture that Auric has on it. It has old wood uh, or nail holes and it has a nail sticking out of it and all that texture all around the edges. I just thought it looked perfect for a nice farmhouse style sign. So I'm going to dust it off really well and then I'm, I'm going to attach the two pieces plank style using two pieces of scrap 1x2s, wood glue, and brad nails. If you do not have brad nails, you can certainly use regular wood or hammer and nails and it should work perfectly fine. Thinking about my options, every detail in my head, but it doesn't really matter, nothing matters, so I cry instead. I've been running in circles, trying to catch my breath. I've been trying. And then of course once it was nicely attached I am now going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. The paint now is fully dry and can you see the yellowing it got? That's because I actually did not clean the wood. This is what happens. But honestly, I knew it would happen, but I want this to have such a farmhouse old style wood sign that I did not, I actually was hoping it got a little bit of stain. And as you can see, I am distressing it pretty heavily. So a lot of that yellowing went away along with the distress. 
but I really want this to look like it's been out and about like the wood just got weathered naturally and that's exactly I think what I got now using an electric sander makes things a lot more distressed which is what I wanted and makes it a lot easier and faster but you can certainly distress by hand using sandpaper I used a 120 grit sandpaper but you can certainly use that or anything else it just depends how quickly and how much you want to distress All right guys, so now it's time to add a stencil. Now this is not an actual stencil. This is just a piece of a sign that I got a while ago. It's probably now about two years ago. And um, I kept it because I just like the way it said and I like the font. I'm gonna be using another um, acrylic marker. This one is the Space Black. And I made the mistake that I was like just trying to stencil on this stencil, which is not a stencil, it's very thick teal or not teal tin material so the tip of the marker was not reaching the bottom very well and here I am trying my best and then I, it dawned on me oh my gosh Lena you can just switch the tip which is one of the wonderful features these markers have is that you can switch the tip and to fit the need that you have and the set of marker comes with tweezers and replacement tips when you need to replace them but in this case I'm just using the tweezer to switch around the tip you're going to see here in just a second the difference it made. I can't believe I didn't think about it sooner. Look at that. Oh my gosh. So satisfying. It worked like magic and it applied like butter. I really, really loved it. So I basically just stenciled the words first because I thought I wasn't going to add the little two details on the top on the bottom, but then I ended up did adding it. So you're going to see that here in a few seconds that I ended up adding them to the sign. All right, guys, so now it's time to add some faux florals. Now, boxwood is not very fall-like, but I wanted to add something that was going to add some fullness to the sign. And I just really wanted to just add that green tone to it. So I'm adding now some fall-style um, fo foliage, I guess, or florals. And then I'm going to secure it using this pipe clamp that you can get on Amazon, you can get them at the hardware store, you can get them in different sizes. This is the half inch, which to me it has worked to create handles on trays. I've used them all the time, but in this case I'm going to use it to clamp down the florals. Now they're not um, completely tightened, which is okay because then I can change the florals as I want. So it worked out really well and I'm just going to secure it with small screws. And we are just about done with this one, guys. Look how stinking cute farmhouse style sign this is. I absolutely love it. so I am cutting here several pieces of wood because for this next project I need several pieces cut in several sizes I'm going to mimic a high-end decor I saw online and I'm just going to um, start uh, painting and cutting with my Cricut just the signs to kind of um, get as close as possible to the original and so I'm just starting with this one here and I'm taping the sides because the original had a darker frame to it but I'm not going to frame it I'm just going to tape it and then it'll give it the effect 
that it's framed. And I'm going to give the middle portion two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. All right, so then I removed the tape to uh, reveal the frame-like um, style to it. And then I took uh, a spoon, a butter knife, and a fork from my kitchen. And I took it outside and I spray painted it using Rust-Oleum spray paint and the flat black. That's because the original had, uh, one of the pieces of the original had a, a fork, a spoon, and a butter knife on it. And then once it was dry, I distressed it using um, dry brushing technique and Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. And now I'm going to attach them on the frame using E6000 so they have a permanent hold. Alright, so now I'm going to take a smaller piece of the wood that I cut and I'm going to paint it using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. I'm going to give it two coats, and in this case, we're going to do something different. We're going to, um, after it's dry, I'm going to tape the, um, the middle portion and then create a frame. So it'll be kind of like the opposite of what we just saw. And um, this is so that I can then paint the edge a darker tone. Um, I had to use several things, several paints to kind of get the darker brown tone that I needed, um, but I got it done. After I cleaned off um, some of the edges that were pretty bad, <laughs> a lot of bleed through got through it, I'm going to hand write um, kind of like what the original had, which was locally owned, fresh eggs, that kind of thing. It was very farmhouse and I'm free handing it because that's a style that I actually had. So I'm just going to do that through the whole thing. And then I cut using my Cricut a uh, chicken <laughs> and I'm going to use it as a decal and I am going to place it in the middle and then paint it on top using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the farmhouse red. All right, so for the next one, it's a similar size one as the previous one, but I'm gonna paint it using a bare chalk paint in the color Pale Sepia. I'm gonna give it two coats. And this one just had more of a beigey kind of tone to it. And then once the paint was dry, I'm gonna take my square and I'm gonna start um, just literally making stripes up and down. And then I also did the same thing horizontally. This is to mimic a plaid look that the original had. I don't have a fabric or a stencil or anything with this small um, plaid, red plaid look. So I used my permanent red marker and I'm just making the stripes and I think it actually turned out pretty good.
And then once again, I uh, used my Cricut to cut a decal. Um, this one in the original said Good Eats. So I try to mimic as close as possible the font. And then I'm going to place it in the middle and then stencil it with, um, oh my gosh, it's a Rust-Oleum chalk bin in the charcoal tone. Alright guys, so for my next one here, I am going to take another piece of the wood that I cut. This one I'm going to stain using very thin stain in the Briar Smoke Tone. And I gave it one coat and then let it dry. And then I using using my Cricut, I cut another stencil um, that uh, again looked like the original. And I'm just going to place it in the middle and then stencil it using the Bare Chalk Paint in the Pale Sepia. And now using painter's tape, I am going to create some stripes. The original had a few stripes in the same color, beige color, so I'm gonna try to mimic it as close as possible. Alright guys, so for the next one, I am going to paint the base using the Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint Farmhouse Red. And um, again, just I think for this one, it was only one coat was sufficient. It didn't need two. And then I let it dry. And then of course, using my Cricut, I purchased from Cricut, the Cricut Design Space a um, kind of like a mason jar design. And then the middle portion I designed. And I'm just going to now start stenciling it using the Pell Sepia Bare Chalk Paint. Alright guys, so for the next one here, I am going to use my table saw and I'm going to cut this piece of paneling directly down the middle, right halfway through because I'm going to need two of the larger pieces with the same size. I'm going to simultaneously work on these two, um, but they're going to have different looks. So I'm just going to dust them off and then I'm going to start painting. One of them is going to be painted in the charcoal tone chalk paint by rust-oleum chalk paint and the other one's going to be painted white with the rust-oleum chalk paint and the linen white
All right, so now I'm going to distress them dry brushing the white paint on the dark tone and then the dark tone on the white paint. That's to give it more of a farmhouse look and again, trying to keep it as original as possible to the inspiration piece. And now I'm going to use, once again, the decals that I've created with my Cricut and I'm going to start placing them as I see in the original and then start stenciling. Once the paint was dry, I am now just lightly distressing using a 220 grit sandpaper. This is to kind of blend in and just soften everything. For the white one, I am going to distress it by hand using my palm sander and a 220 grit sandpaper. Um, again, just trying to mimic the original. Um, sand it off and then I'm just going to start adding um, some painter's tape to create some stripes that the original had and using the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the farmhouse red.
I did get a lot of bleed through as you can see so I had to um, just uh, with a small brush just really um, start fixing that and just cleaning it off. And then once again, just used my Cricut to um, then create the stencil for this one. A lot simpler. And then I'm going to stencil it using the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the charcoal tone. And now I am going to um, just soften everything again using a 220 grit sandpaper. I'm just going to go all around the um, gosh, the red stripes and again just to soften it as well as the stencil. Okay, right, so this is what the original looked like. And this is what mine looks like. I would love to know what you think. I would love to know if you think I nailed it or failed it. Um, I, I like it. I think it turned out pretty close. And I really love the farmhouse style it has. All right, guys, so next DIY is going to be a very similar one to the one you saw is where I took a um, an inspiration piece and I am going to recreate it using less expensive items. So I have this paneling again in my garage and I'm just going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. Alright, so then using my Cricut, as you see here, I am trying to mimic the original uh, love word that was on it. And um, I think I nailed it, guys. Like, I rarely say that. <laughs> but I really got really lucky and was able to match the font almost exactly as the original. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I show you. So I'm just going to uh, weed it here and then place it in the middle. The problem, not the problem, but the challenge was that the original had these lines that extended from the L and the E on each side. So I had to freehand that with a permanent marker. And to say that I was nervous is to say the least. I was freaking out, but I did it. I just didn't want to ruin it, you know? So I did it and I think it turned out pretty close.
All right, so now I'm going to place these scrap pieces of one by four in the back. And that is to keep this, the two purposes. One, it'll help it hang easier. And it also helps uh, keep the, the paneling from kind of bending because it is a thin paneling. So I'm just going to staple it, or not staple it, brad nail it from the front. And then I did um, cover those holes using spackle and then painted those little spots so it just blended in with the paint. Get away from every little thing just to try to make it through. I've been thinking about my options, every detail in my head, but it doesn't really matter. Nothing matters, so I cry. All right, guys, so I'm going to show you what the original looked like. So, the original looked like the or had the black frame, but I think overall, I think I really love the way it turned out. I, I also did, as part of this uh, video, I had done these three hooks here, but I just wanted to show you the um, the sign itself. And I just think that love part of it, again, I got really lucky and finding a font that was very similar to the original, but I really loved the way it turned out. Dollar Tree Beware sign and I'm going to remove the ribbon as well as sand off all the glitter <laughs> from the letters. You know guys I'm sure if you've done this before it is a lot of work. This glitter gets everywhere but there's something so weird and satisfying about it that I just love. So there you go it's a love-hate relationship with the glitter on the signs. So once I had it removed I made sure that I dusted it and cleaned it very very well and then I gave it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. Once the paint was dry, and now I'm going to make some lines. So you see that the sign has those little ridges on each end. I just felt like they look like planks. So I'm going to make lines all across. And I could not find my yardstick anywhere. So I had to use this piece of scrap flooring to make the lines. And I just made the lines all the way to the top. All right, so now I am going to take my drill and I am just going to drill holes all down each side. So the original sign had two of them and I thought about filling them in so that you don't see them. But then I thought, you know what, instead of filling them in, I'm just going to make more holes on each plank. And I think it just added this cute little detail to it. All right, so I keep my some of my decals from different 
Cricut stencils that I make. So if I cut a stencil and I am using the stencil part of it, if I'm able to save the decal, I use them. And so I use this pumpkin word on another project and I just thought it would be cute for this one. So I'm going to use the stencil for part of it. And then I take another, uh, the two and the nine from another project that you see on that piece of scrap paper. And I'm going to make it pumpkins 25 cents. And then I don't have the cents, so I'm just going to use the E that you see there, make it into a C, and then add the two little um, dots or little lines to make the scent symbol. And so that everything matches, I am now going to take that same yarn and wrap it around on each end to add some texture and details. And to finish it off, I'm going to take three of these Dollar Tree pumpkin picks and I am going to hot glue them to the sign. At first, I thought I wanted them all together like a little pumpkin vignette, but then I decided to separate them and I just hot glued them in place. And then I did add um, a claw hook uh, or two claw hooks on the back so that it can be hung. Alright, so we're just about done with this one and I think it turned out so cute, very seasonal, but yet very farmhouse. Alright guys, so this wooden sign I found at the thrift store and although it was very pretty at its by itself and the way it was, I had other plans for it. So I'm going to give it the, a two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. After the paint was dry, I'm going to use this stencil. It says it's so good to be home. I've used it several times and I just thought it was perfect for this particular project. And I'm going to stencil it using regular house, household latex black paint. And I'm going to just have it on the bottom of the, of the frame and I think it turned out pretty cute. All right, 
right so now I am going to distress it just a bit using a 220 grit sandpaper I'm just gonna go all around the corners and a little bit here and there just to give it a more farmhouse look And we're just about done with this one. And look how cute this looks. I love this. I still have it. And literally, it's one of my favorite. And I think it's because of the simplicity of it. I love things that are very simple. Even though this table is in general good shape, is not quite my style. And to be honest with you, to paint everywhere inside boat, like the, the inner shelf and all those spindles, ah, I was just not feeling it. And then when I saw how sturdy it was, I just wanted to do something with it. So the original plan was to, as you can see here, remove everything, which I did. I'm just going to remove all the screws, remove everything. And I wanted to keep the top shelf and the bottom shelf. But as you can tell, it was broken. And I didn't even know um, because it was secured with screws. So I could not use that bottom um, shelf or that bottom platform. But it's okay. I still have the top one, which is what I'm going to be working with. But I'm not going to throw away any of these parts <laughs> because, you know what, they can make some good DIYs. So I'm going to keep them. I'm just going to push them to the side right now. But I will keep the top uh, of the table. And that's what I'll be working with. So now that everything is removed, this is what I have left. Let me tell you, this top is heavy. It's really solid. And yeah, I'm going to turn it into a ser uh, like a extra large serving tray slash wall decor. So the first thing I want to do is fill in these holes in the on the bottom. Now you won't be able to see these. These will be either against the wall if it's on the wall or underneath um, if it's in the um, on top of the table as a tray however I wanted to have a little bit more finished look and um, so I just wanted to fill them in so that then I can sand and paint in a little bit All right, so I turned it over. The wood filler is not dry yet. I placed something underneath the the table there or the platform. I don't know what to call this. <laughs> Let's call it platform. Um, so that way the wood filler is not touching my table, my workbench. But um, so now I'm gonna give the surface a good clean using crud cutter and a uh, just a good sanding using 220 grit sandpaper and then I'll clean it again and remove all the dust. I'm 
I am going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in the linen white. I gave the first coat using my chippy brush. However, for the second coat, I decided to move on with to my chalk paint brush because I was starting to see way too many uh, brush strokes and I didn't like that. Not for such a big piece. If it was a smaller piece, I usually don't mind. For something so big, it, it's, it's just like doing a piece of furniture. I just decided to, for the second coat, to use my chalk paint brush. But I just gave the two coats and then let it fully dry. All right, so once the two coats were dry, I am now going to distress it using my electric sander once again. And I actually kept that 220 grit sandpaper. So it's not distressing as um, fast, I guess, as um, as I want, as I'm used to. Because normally I would use like a maybe a, uh, if I wanted a heavier distress, like I do one on this one, like a 120. But it's what I had on the on the sander. So no big deal. I just sanded it for a little longer. And um, I'm not going to do too much of the center. I'm not really looking for a distressed look in the center. But I do want the edges and the sides to be nicely distressed. and honor that she picked me as her co-host so mark your calendars film yourself and hey let's have fun creating some treasures out of trash all right guys so here we are i am using my cricut design space to create what i'm going to use on in the front of the serving tray now this is what I started with. The original plan was to use this one. And then I changed my mind and you'll see which one I picked. But I just wanted to show you kind of like the process. I basically just pick a design. This one I had already in my design space. I purchased it from uh, Cricut Design Space. And then I cut it. I am using this blue vinyl, which I absolutely love. I do have it in my Amazon store, which is linked down below if you're interested. Actually, most of my supplies that I use, I do have in my Amazon on store link down below so I cut it and then um uh start weeding it you know the normal process would be to weed it I'm going to use it as a stencil um I was considering doing it as a decal so instead of using it as a stencil however I didn't have enough black vinyl so I had to then do it as a stencil which is fine all right, so now that everything is dry on the opposite side as well as the wood filler, I am going to now sand the excess wood filler out using, now I'm using a 120 grit sandpaper, and I'm just sanding it until it's nicely smooth. And then I am going to dust it, remove all the dust, and I'm going to give it two coats of the same paint, Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. Like a void, but you broke the 
All right, so the paint is fully dry on the opposite side. And now that I, I, now that I still have it facing this way, I am going to add the, uh, the claw tooth hooks to the back. I'm going to add two of them because I, this is a very heavy piece and I want to make sure that it's not going to fall. So I am just going to secure it with screws and then I'm going to add felt little pads on each of those little holes because the wood filler kind of dried up a little sunk in. Um, I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm going to be placing felt pads anyways on the back. That's so that when they place it on a tabletop, it does not scratch the table. And I'm actually going to double up on the felt pads because I want it to be higher than the claw hooks so that it does not scratch the table. All right, so the back is all done. Now I am going to weed the stencil and get ready to start stenciling. I did also cut a, another stencil that said established in 1912. I just thought it needed a little bit something else. Um, and you'll see the design that I picked eventually for it. I just like that it had that round look and I thought it would look a lot nicer. And I actually love the way it turned out. Alright, so to stencil it, I am going to use a large stenciling sponge brush and a Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the charcoal tone. And I'm just going to stencil it. I mean, I love this color because it has a very dark, almost black color, but it is gray. And I just really love the way it looks. And um, I think for this project, it turned out really cute. And then once you pull it, I love this part because it's so satisfying to watch. Um, you'll see how cute I think everything is coming together. When you get too close 
All right, I let the paint fully dry from the stenciling and now I'm going to give it three coats of um, Verithane polyurethane and the crystal clear. This is so that if anything spills on it, you want to make sure this chalk paint is sealed. Um, you don't want anything spilled. It, it is so matte that it will be just just stained and dingy and it would just not look right so i started using my brush and then i moved on to my applique appli oh my gosh my sponge applicator um and i did the other two coats with the sponge applicator i should have just done the sponge applicator i don't know why i grabbed my brush but you can use either or it's fine um and again i have all these supplies in my amazon store now when i am uh sealing the darker uh, color paint I am going I'm doing very fast and I'm not trying to linger trying to um, brush over brush on top of it because it will reactivate the paint and then I have had it where it does smear a little bit so I'm trying to keep it very light and also very quick right on those um, darker tone uh, wood area all right so now it's time to add handles I am going I bought couple of handles at the hardware store and um, I'll have them linked down below and um, I am using a technique that I recently learned which I love is you take some painter's tape and you put it on the back side of the handles you poke where the handle little screw holes are and then you use that as your template to screw in the holes which is I thought it was just brilliant so now I'm just measuring making sure both sides are on the same or as close as possible on the same side on each side and then I'm going to take my drill and pre-drill some holes and then get ready to add the handles. Shooting me with words but I won't let them bruise Even though it hurts I won't show it to you Cause it will ricochet, I will let it bite I will look at you and tell you that I'm alright Like a ricochet, it will come back to ya Cause I don't care about you anymore So you can't hurt me like you did before Let me tell you So guys, we all right guys, so we're just about done with this one and it's our final DIY and here's what it looked like originally and then this is what it turned out to be. It is stunning. It actually sold within a couple of weeks of me finishing it and I'm very happy and it went to a great home and what a farmhouse look, right? But anyways, thanks so much for watching guys. I know there's a ton of inspiration in this video, but I would love to know which one is your favorite. You know, let me know which one inspired you the most. And if you're visiting for the first time, I hope you consider subscribing and joining our YouTube family. And if you are returning, as always, I say thank you for taking the time to watch and for your support. Have a great day, guys. Amen.